Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anand Kumar, and I'm a senior cloud engineer at SARA Systems. And uh, what I do for my uh, for SARA System was to help customers in different verticals to leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning language in their business and provide solutions based on their, rec their business requirements. One of the industry that I work is in retail. During this conference, I'm going to just talk about how machine learning will impact a professional promotional strategies in, one of, in the retail industry. So this is all about the AI-powered coupon personalization for, for customers in the retail industry. So the topics that I'm going to cover is some introduction about AI, which we all know, and some promotional strategies in and around AI. What is AI-powered coupon personalization? Types of customers for personalization, how machine learning algorithms drive personalization, benefits of AI personalization, uh, coupon personalization, some case studies, some real examples that I can I, I like to share, and some successful implementation around those case studies, and and also some challenges and ethical considerations when using AI and ML, and future trends in the AI-powered promotions. Let's get into the topics. Uh, first thing, introduction to AI and promotional strategies. So to before I start with, I'm sure most of you might think about discounts, promotions, offers in the real-time world. Especially in the retail, you go to any retail store to buy cloths or groceries, or anything, the first thing that we notice is about the discounts. When you enter the store, somebody will be standing outside the door and coming you with the promotion uh, newsletter or paper, 50% off, 20% off. So they just wanted to welcome you with their offers and discounts. But do you know that there is a big strategy that is there? There could be a business strategy uh, behind there for every of those coupons or the newsletters that you receive. What the topic, is, what the today's topic that I'm going to do help you uh, to understand is how this AI and ML is going to help these retail uh, companies, retail industry, as well as customer to take the full advantage of, of the products or, or the discounts that, you know, that the, retail comp the retail industry sells, the retail shop sells, or the customer who's going to purchase, purchase that. So quickly start with digital transformation in retail. Right now, everything is data-driven in the AI. Uh, without the data, there is nothing. And every, every moment, everything that you do in a retail or anywhere, it is all, uh, the business is all driven by the data strategies. Um, so what is the AI role? We saw all these days we are using some uh, data analytics, but now introducing the AI um, uh, into the customer's data can help to give uh, accurate personalization on the offers and resonate the individuals, individual consumers. How? that particular offer that 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 the retail shop gives how that it really benefits the customers so do we all know that the retail the e-commerce market or the retail industry market is a 6.3 trillion dollars by end of this 2024 and how ai is going to personalize those offer and crucial competitive against these retail companies so let's get into the real topic from the next slide. So what does AI-powered coupon personalization means? To give you, to start with and give you an example, say for example, you're going to Walmart or Amazon store or anywhere in the world, like even in India, there are big bazaar stores or Reliance stores. The moment you enter, there might be a desk or somebody would be standing and giving you those coupons or offers or you might get some letters, or you might get some messages to your phone, email, that, hey, this is a festival offer, it's Christmas, it's New Year. If you purchase, it can be like 20% offer, or if you buy these two, there is a third one will be an offer. And today's rate for, if you buy two shirts, there will be a band, it's free, or it can be anything. 
But most of the time, have you realized that that those are not even necessary for me at the time that I wanted to purchase? For example, you might be, say you go to a retail store where you wanted to buy a sh shampoo from a different company and a conditioner from a different uh, company. Uh, say you're, you wanted a shampoo from L Laurel and uh, you wanted conditioner from Avino or uh, some other brand. But unless the way you buy both, there might be an offer. Or if you're buying separate, there is no offer. And uh, sometimes I don't want it a sh sh uh, shampoo at all. Or I use something herbal, which I buy online or something. So you don't need that. Or there might be another example where I am. I love wine. I wanted to drink wine. Or some other preferences will be they don't want to drink wine or any alcohol or anything. But in the paper, it's a very common uh, collection of offers will be there. Or say a pineapple. So some offers would say if you buy two pineapples, there will be another one will be on offer. But I don't need pineapple on for that particular day. Why would I need that on a on a winter uh, time? Pineapples are for summer. But the offers that they give you will be on uh, winters because the retail store know that we have to give them offer since that has not been sold or there is an excessive amount of produce is already there. Most of the time, I have, when I go, uh, either. I, I I don't like that offer at that point of time or I don't um, I don't want it that 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 particular time what a, uh, what a power coupon personalization does is uh, every retail store you go there might be an account they might ask your phone number they might ask you for the store and store customer number or something, they always collect the data. And whenever you enter the bill, they might ask you, hey, do you have the barcode? Do you have the, your customer? Do you want to sign up for that retail? So everything is all data c collected. Uh, we collect data. Rather than, so when I say the data, the data is collected from you, your no home number, your, uh, your, your house address, or something that whenever you go, they know that it is your purchasing. So think about a year worth of data, what all you have bought from that particular store, uh, sure, or you bought it from, from that particular retail, say it is a Walmart for, for our example. They store it in, in their database. So th they know this particular customer is planning to buy or he has bought this many number of products from us and every time or every month, he might have bought a particular set of products. Say it, is, it can be shampoo, or it can be onions, or it can be like, like shaving blades or creams or, or anything that. So what we're doing is um, we are collecting all that particular data for that particular customer throughout the year, okay, or six months. And we are um, trying um, to personalize a coupon just for him. So rather than a, 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 a very generalized discounts and offers, uh, we want that customer to take leverage on what he has purchased on his history. Say, again, going back to the example, I love wine. If I wanted, they know from my every month I have bought this particular brand of wine and say, okay, you're buying that brand of wine, but this time we're giving you an offer. If you buy two bottles of that wine, there might be another bottle of wine that is free. Or think about another set of brand of wine. So if you buy that brand of wine, you might get an an offer from this brand or another brand. You can just personalizing or trying to understand the customer's behavior based on what he has purchased all through these years and giving an offer would be more valuable for the customer and for the, and for the retail store to hold that customer for a longer time. I bet that made, that really makes sense, right? How I achieve this? 
is we have to definitely make sure the customer is a member of that particular store. Say if it is a Walmart, I become a Walmart member. And I just make sure I collect the reasonable data from different sources, from apps that the customer used, that the, then the website the customer has used, or, or his location, it just based on different parameters. We, we use machine learning languages and models to predict what would customer might buy how can I just be a value add? Say, for example, most of the customers, like if you if you see the trend, if I go and buy a wine from a store, I have the tendency to buy a chips or a chicken. Uh, it really makes sense, right? Hey, you, you, you buy a wine, so you get an offer for your uh, lace chips or something else. Or, you know, there is an offer that if you buy a wine, then there is a uh, there is some discounts on the chicken or uh, some, some party product. So you think about uh, you are personalizing your discounts only for that particular customer, and that discount might not be available for the other customers. People are spending thousands and thousands of money on the advertisement and, and Doing a personalization would definitely make sense for customers. Customers, I personally allow it. I'm sure everybody, if there is a personalized discount for that particular person, I feel like I am more valuable for that particular store and I love to go to that particular store. Okay, moving on, how I achieve this? How do I know the customer's pattern? So there are various things. As I mentioned before, purchase history, six months, a year, or the frequency, I would, I would definitely love to collect at least three years of data, his age, his gender, because I don't want it to give a wine to a less, an 18 year or, or a teenager who's not turned 18 or 21. Based on the browsing history that he might have used, hey, is this product available in Walmart? I just collect that. I know, and very uh, contextual data. Sometimes it, it is mostly like uh, that particular location. I live in that location. I have three Walmarts around around my area within around 10 meters. I usually go to any one of them. Trying to understand your customers better, that really makes sense. And think about some social media activities as well. Because right now, when you hit enter on any of the website, you go to a particular website, that person really knows that oh, what is, is he doing. Say if I go to Walmart website and I'm just searching it. Don't think that I only I know. Probably Walmart also knows that I am uh, I'm searching for this particular product. Uh, or uh, and also they would also know that how many times I have clicked this website, what all the pages that I have visited. So this is all is the data co collection uh, event. This is this is all getting into into a database where where it is just trying to get into a meaningful. So so try to understand what is that particular customers personalization, what is his personality basically? Um, well, well, if, say for example, if I am 50 years old or 60 years old and a person, if I am diabetic, say I'm searching in for diabetic or anything, probably I won't, I won't need a discount on a chocolate or, uh, or a cake. Say if an offer comes to me saying you buy two cakes, there is a third one. Why would I buy a cake where I am already suffering from diabetics and I, I might ignore that, right? Ignore that particular discount. I might buy for another one. That is a chance, but the, the, the chances of that is pretty less than me having that, right? I hope you get basically trying to know their age, gender, a particular location. This all just derives me or just puts me into that particular category or a box where, okay, understand that particular person's behavior, personality, on what he's, he may or may not buy, and based on that, produce that give him that personalized offer. okay? I hope you you're getting it, and it's pretty interesting. Okay. Then comes the technical part of it. Uh, how do I achieve this? Okay, say I have I, I went to Walmart. I signed up there for their membership, or uh, I'm just taking Walmart as an example. But uh, really, I have personally done this project for a different retail retail store, and uh, it's been an amazing success. 
Um, in future, you might see this tr trends uh, going on with the most of the retail stores throughout the world. Okay, let's talk uh, to, to get in, get deeper into the machine learning algorithms. So these algorithms, th these are some of the algorithms that can derive you. One is collaborative filtering. Uh, you're collecting from different users, different patterns. Say, for example, if a person of of an age age between twenty to thirty. You particularly know by now that what his, what will be his eating patterns will be, what he would allow. I know we all love ice creams, for example, but the amount of ice creams you consume in your later uh, between 10 to 25, it will be more, but uh, during the period of time you become older, the ice creams you might take a, a, a couple of scoops. But in a childhood, you might take a... So basically you're just trying to understand the, the, the pattern. What it helps you is, okay, if I buy two boxes of ice cream, this particular customer is a 20 year old, Probably he might go, his patterns are just, she tells me that he's an ice cream lover. So let me ha produce this these offers for the age group between 20 and 30, right? So there will be four algorithms that easily can help you with this. And one is the collaborative filtering. And the second one is the content-based filtering. Uh, the customers are already interacted with based on what they have purchased. Okay, then comes to the neural network where I call the deep learning side of it, trying to understand the pattern and predict his future preferences. We all know, you know, say if it is going to be winter, right, for example, what will be a pattern of products or anything that a person might buy during the winter? So to just give you an example, it would be very interesting where a customer, he always buys some some pills, say for for cold pills, because you have the option, you have the tendency to get sick during the winter by cough or cold or anything. So whoever purchased that, purchased that in that particular store, this store opened a pharmacy, this retail store. So think about like, why would a retail store open a pharmacy? Because the patterns are like showing like that, right? You buy the based on the product, one part of the department, you buy the grocery, based on the department, he might have the tendency to, to buy the cough or cold medicines. Uh, so this all comes from the deep learning analysis based on your behavior, right? And again, um, examples, like if you go to, right now, even if you go to a retail store, Previously, any retail store is comes in mind, say for Walmart, 10 or 20 years back, when I, 10 years back, I was going to Walmart, it was just groceries. Now they literally expand into the clothing division, right? Now I can go and buy my, uh, they expanded to a pharmacy inside. Why would you buy, 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 there is a pharmacy like Walgreens and other stores and why would Walmart get into the, buy? this is all comes from the patterns that the customer have bought from the store, okay? So <laughs> it literally means like you bought something from the store, you become sick. So rather than going to the pharmacies right there in the retail store, right? Um, then uh, the interesting part is now, now you can see that the groceries are there. Yeah, the rest of the things have been accomplished. Now you can see the restaurant, the small the restaurants are inside the Walmart. Do you think, have you ever seen like you go into a Walmart and you know, buying pizza uh, or uh, Subway, you know, because people are tired, they know that they will be hungry by the time they pre-shop. So rather than just taking their car or just going out to Subway somewhere, why don't we just put the Subway right there? See. This is all comes from these kind of uh, patterns. Uh, four algorithms I have, we have used. One is the deep learning, and the last one would be the natural language processing. This analyzes the textual data, reviews the feedbacks, understand the customer's sentiments and, and the preferences. So these are the vital thing that we have used that I have personally used in the in driving a personalized coupons. Okay, moving on, moving on. Why are we doing all this? What is the benefits of this coupon personalization? It is pretty simple, right? As I did just informed you, one is improves the engagement. Most of the time, keeping the customer engaged is so important. As I told you, just to give you an example, why would I have a restaurant in a retail, uh, a fast food store in a retail store? It's just because like you're having customer engage to buy more things, 
right? Say if I, I was in, in a store, right? While printing the bill, it was saying, I bought some $50 worth of products and it just says like, you are worth to buy a pizza for free. A slice of pizza at the food counter for free. I was literally thinking of after the store, I have to go and buy food outside to go to a restaurant or, or, or a fast food. And I'm just, I don't know how they read my mind. Like I, I was really hungry. It was like well, 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 one, two, 2 p.m. in the night. So buy, I'm just, okay, I love it. So it just gives me that personalized coupon based on my purchase. You go and have your free pizza because you bought a 50 worth or $100 worth of uh, product from the retail. So this is wise, right? So have them customers engaged. The next one is hyper conversation rates. The AI-driven AI -driven personalization can drive significant sales curves for the retail. Trust me, I have just put it as 150. I have, we have seen the retail store making a huge amount of profits and they can uh, decide the based on the customer, like what all that they need to buy, you know, what all they need to, because have you ever seen a retail store dumping their products outside? That has become less. They know what that particular store or the people uh, might buy. They have understood uh, the customers better. Say, um, uh, you know, most of the time I have seen um, uh, the grocery products like potatoes uh, or anything. It's always, uh, you know, or a period of time, it just goes away. They just dump it in the yard. But right now they know that, okay, this particular store only needs this much of kilos or pounds of potatoes, so they don't overbuy. So ready by reducing that, they have they have raised the bar, like in, uh, they, they have increased the sales and they have saved the money. And the most important thing that I wanted to mention here is the customer retention. Personalized coupons has become really a built a loyalty for those customers. Say I use Target and uh, Walmart um, uh, most of the time. They have their own uh, differences and pieces, but I use Walmart the more because of that. You know, if some store is giving me that personalized coupon, I would love to just go back again and again because uh, they know what I wanted. And if I'm just getting a better price out of that, why not? And it just definitely increased my boost because based on my purchases, they are giving me discounts on other things. Say, for example, I, I told you about a free food that was based on my purchases. Uh, I got a, a slice of pizza that is more well, for me. I, I like it. I, I was hungry. I know they understood my preferences. And uh, there was a coupon that was just popped in my screen. Okay, based on your purchase, you got a free... Just go and have it. Damn, what else you wanted? <laughs> okay, next thing, cost-effective marketing. And this is very important, the demand and supply. It's very cost-effective. Rather than giving a personalized coupon, pretty general, which has so many things, and I don't have time to just sweep all the coupon pages and see which of the coupons will fit for me or fit for, fit for me. Maybe there might be a coupon that might fit for me, but not for that time. Pretty simple. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on to the next slide. Okay, definitely, I cannot just talk about without any examples. There are case studies, and I have I have made it as a gen very general uh, case studies. Many of Amazon, many of Netflix. I've just stayed uh, Sephora. That is a that's a different that, that's a big retail in, in U.S. Um, so I will talk about that as well. So what is Amazon? Look at Amazon. Why they have been very successful right now is just because of the recommendations that they, they give. Based on your purchases, they have collected all the data over the years and giving you the right relevant product and the discount that really makes sense. And I don't know, I have been using Amazon for the past 10 years and I have and I, I don't want it to go for another one. Uh, even though the other pe ha people have given me more offer or uh, the store or like Walmart, but still the, the Amazon gives me a, a little value add uh, uh, than the other other stores, especially in the uh, uh, on, on the coupon space. Right now in US, there's a prime deal going on. I love I mean, I, I, after this meeting, all day I'm in Amazon just because of these because of the coupons. Though I don't want it to buy because of the people offer me the best coupon, let's go and buy it. Damn. Okay, next thing, Netflix. Personalized content recommendation, okay? I think we talked about a lot of algorithms, right? 
Uh, and uh, Netflix is the pioneer in using these algorithms. Netflix, was, they were going down, and now suddenly they just picked up, their shares went so high just because of, they're using, definitely they're using these, they're giving you the, they're using the recommendations, you know, based on the movies that you watch, predictive analysis and the deep learning and the natural language processing, they understand that, okay, this person likes to watch romantic movies or thriller movies, such as that's something just based on that particular alert How do I do it? You see, it's pretty simple, right? I have a Netflix account, one account, but we all as a family shares. My wife watches romantics. I watch a thriller. My son watches cartoons. So based on that recommendation and personalization, you get into that particular account, you see all these varieties. It just personalized for those particular person. And again, the last one is uh, Sephora. It's a virtual uh, artist apps. It enables customers to buy product virtually. Imagine leading uh, higher customer engagement and sales. With users uh, trying 50 looks per session on an average, I definitely you should uh, use one of, uh, it, is, it is great. Okay, um, moving on to next. Definitely, if there is a technology, there is definitely, there is, there, there is, there are high chances there you you have challenges okay there's nothing that again one of the biggest challenges what we have seen in, in this industry is whenever you're collecting a large amount of data because you're trying to understand the customer's behavior especially i told you if customer is sharing an information saying that if i am diabetic or if i have some other disease those customers should not be recommended for a more sugary products it's just a basic understanding so there you're personally collecting those information, you're trying to understand, okay, this customer, so why would I have to go and tell the whole public of the world that I am diabetic or I have this problem? But you're literally entering that data in that app, in the re in the retail store app, so that has to be preserved, right? So the, uh, so encryptions or anything that retail store, the data privacy is it, because once you hack, Security and hacking. I see many people uh, talking about security and Skype security. So I'll, I talk about when I say data privacy, you know what that means. Is. Okay. Algorithm BIOS is AI models are unnaturally premature BIOS, resulting in unfair treatments across different democratic groups. Okay. <laughs> this is so funny that when I ask a question to ChatGPT, at the same time, I ask uh, the same question to G G Gemini or the Google's version of it. And I use perspicuity of there was another, there were so many. Every GPTs gives me a different uh, answer. Some of them, it just hurts me. And some of them, I feel like, why would you just uh, put, put the state by a statement rather that is not right? So you got to be very careful in those using those algorithms. Say, for example, you, you cannot say for example you if a kid is being in the store and a kid a person of less than 18 who is a customer uh you are normally you cannot recommend no matter what you cannot recommend an alcoholic beverages for that kid the kid might be searching based on okay or he might be doing that but uh you're understanding that, okay, this kid is, is less than 18 years old, so I'm not going to recommend or give him promotions on an alcoholic. This is a basic understanding. I'm just giving you a high, very high level understanding because I don't want him to get into the bias things. I don't want him to become more religious and just uh, just telling what the bias means and I don't want to get it bust. Algorithmic biases are very com common when we are using these algorithms, just make sure you put a class that we, we understand. So for example, recently, like my my uh, one of my friend is a pure vegan, and uh, when he gets an offer for for meat, he gets so offended. Like, why am I getting these offers to buy chicken? I, though I am I'm a vegan, right? So I'm just giving a very high level bias statement that what that algorithm predicts, uh, and and just uh, gives the results uh, uh, on that. And um, next is the trust and transparency, customers trust before they put that info uh, information. So customers find over like personality offers in a visit, right? Ensure the transparency and giving user control their data is crucial. Um, then you're collecting some information, just make sure that 
customer know that you are you're collecting those uh, information. I think at least in US, there are many uh, companies that have been questioned by by the government saying that whether Facebook tracks are where are you, what they do, <laughs> right? So. I don't, I'm not get, getting into more t detail on this, but just uh, in a very high level, uh, um, how, how trend, we have, we, uh, as an AI or whatever we are building for the customers, we got to be very transparent with, the, with what customers, okay. Technical requirements. Uh, implementing AS expensive, uh, AI systems are pretty expensive. It requires significant in, in, uh, investment. So think about, I just told you about, um, at least I need uh, a year or five years worth of data of what customer has purchased in that particular store over the years, uh, collecting the data, cleaning off that data, and make it a valuable, a, a, a truthful, or, or a very meaningful data to the to the AI and ML is crucial, and it is it's still uh, you, you need a lot of skills and time, infrastructure, cost. Yeah, these are some of the challenges that uh, I have faced when when you're building your machine learning algorithms. Okay, going on to the next trends and future, maybe future future trends. What are we uh, uh, trying to deal with it? Okay, so as I told you, this will be your future in uh, the retail space, where nowhere you will be getting a very broad. Uh, a newspaper or a very broad, okay, uh, these are the things that are in the promotional rather than it'll be a personal. So AI is going to enable the real-time adjustments to promotions based on the immediate customer behavior. I gave you an example for the pizza, okay? Immediately, I bought it for a $50, $50. It just tried to understand my personal's behavior. I, they might know because they want me to have, have their lunch or dinner at at that at the retail rather than just going to a restaurant or or a, or, or a fast food place so it is going to be dynamic right why it is dyna dynamic because i bought something and i don't want a coupon for tomorrow to go okay go back to the retail store to have a pizza why would i use it <laughs> i don't want because i go two two weeks once you know, if my coupon just arrived on that time while I am this going heading to the store, how valuable is that? Think, right? Okay, so it's going to be real time offers will be producing for customers deeper integration. So AI will expand beyond the promotional strategies. Okay, like uh, customer services, automation, inventory management, and predictive analysis for future customer needs. This is very important, right? So the AI is going to engage, will be more personalized. So say, for example, if I am if I am going to Walmart, the app or the AI app, is Walmart app, just gives me, an, a re, uh, tells me that, hey, if you're budget, oh, you, hey, this is Sunday, uh, I understand. If you're going to Walmart, this is the offers that we are delivering. Just telling them, right? Because I don't want to just go to their website to understand uh, what the promotions are going on rather than AI just telling me, you go to the store, this will be just for today. If you're buying a laptop or you're buying a phone, there is an exciting promotion this Sunday. If you go, you're, you're the one who will be luckiest to get that offer. How cool is that, right? Okay, and AI uh, augmented shopping. Really, retailers will be offered an even more interactive shopping experience through AI, like virtual assistants, like a AR product previews, right? Most of the time, okay, you always in a dilemma to buy something, right? You go, you pick a laptop, you always ask the question whether this is the right price for me, whether this will be useful for me, what would be the return policy on this? What do we, what are people talk about the reviews are, are about this product? And you got to be just keep searching for all those and just to come to a conclusion rather than think about you see a product, to, to, these are the results that you had, have this many reviews have been given, all are like 4.5 and more. And by geography, this is one of the best laptops that you can purchase from the store. Okay, this has the best RAM. This is the, the this is a you just you just pops up in my uh, app or application about that product. It just really makes me a touch point. Like uh, I don't have to spend too much time whether to buy that or not, right? And then give me what are the advantages of and disadvantages of buying the uh, buying that product. Here you go. You know I don't have to call my friends or people who have purchased and just spend my time on a call or on a uh, to understand about the pro product rather than it just boom pops up <laughs> all right 
Conclusion, good. This interactive of AI personalization promotion strategies is transforming the retail industry a big time. Offers businesses the ability to deliver high category and more relevant coupons, as I just mentioned this, right? And I'm just not going technically, um, I'm not going to read about that, but just in a high level. 35% raise in coupon redemination. Think about like how many people are re redeeming your coupons nowadays, you know? It, I don't think you give uh, any attention to coupons or anything or for if there was a sales guy just coming too near to me, I'm just going to, go, going to walk away from him rather than just standing with him and just talking about the sales promotions, right? This is going to help in 35% raise in using the coupons. And we have found that there's 22% of the customers who will be just retain with that particular store, right? However, while the potential AI in personalization is immense, business might also address the key challenges that I have mentioned on data privacy, compliances. There should be regular guardrails for all of this, all of this technology behind that works behind the AI. So somebody is not misusing that rather than just it is just going to help the real man, help the man, mankind. So companies that are developing the artificial intelligence models, machine learning models, should be more cautious to be to understand, okay, this is sensitive data. I'm not going to screw up with this. Just add, I'm going to add some extra layer of protection on top of it. Got it? I think that's all about the, today's presentation. I hope you all might have enjoyed this. And if there are any questions, feel free. My contact information are, are there, the, the conference web, web page. And it was a pleasure to give me to, to talk to you about this and connecting and meeting you, everyone, on this. Thank you.